After hours of work and several cuts, Harry was finished cleaning the mysterious woman's house. He was about to leave until he heard the creak from the old staircase once again. He instantly turned around to see the woman walking down the stairs. Harry remained still. He had no idea if he should just leave or stay still. Harry thought he should better leave, but as soon as he was about to, he was called back by the woman. Young man, please wait. I want to say good luck. Harry's attention was automatically fixed to the woman. It was most probably due to her soothing voice that anyone could place trust in. Harry thought of why she was wishing him good luck. Why? The woman came down the stairs and stood in front of Harry. She was around the same size as Petunia, but for some reason Harry didn't feel as threatened by her presence. She looked at Harry and gave a smile. I know more about you than you think about yourself, Mr. Potter. She said while a cat leaped into her hands as she began to stroke it. Your future is safe in my hands. I would explain it to you, but I don't want to ruin the surprise, she said while raising her eyebrows. Harry looked confused and said, thank you, Miss Rowling, I guess. Bye then. Harry really didn't know what he was thanking her for, but he left the house. As he was going through the door, a voice behind him called, Call me Joni. He was about to look behind to say goodbye one last time. When he did, though, he noticed she was gone. He quickly left to the Dursley's house. Okay, so return to the mm, Dursley's it is then, I guess. I'm not too sure what to think. I think it just needs to be updated. I think that's really all it needs to be is updated for uh, 1.1 and it'll be probably as good as I saw the comments and everything when we we're talking about it. But until then it's a little behind. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Read note 10. Yay! Skippy doo -dah. Let's check it out. Harry arrived at the Dursleys a couple minutes later. He was still debating in his head on the things the woman said. He came to the conclusion that she was just a little not with it. When Harry entered the house, everything was silent. He thought to himself that the Dursleys must still be out. He therefore had a sense of relaxation and did a little dance around the house. He was about to go sit on Vernon's chair in the lounge when he heard talking. We cannot let him see this, Vernon, said Petunia, serving a kind of envelope. Yes, indeed we cannot. He is already more troubled than he is worth. I mean, if his parent... said Vernon. Unfortunately, Harry was unable to read the rest due to the fake cough coming from behind him. How dare you spy on Mommy and Daddy, said the lump of a boy who was standing in front of Harry. And what are you going to do about it, said Harry, clutching his fist. I w... Deadly was interrupted by a flying letter through the window. It hit him across the head. What on earth? Mommy! Harry's throwing letters at me! complaining deadly as he walked into the Dursley's lounge. The three of them started to tell Harry off. Suddenly, letters started flying in through. Okay, well, so pretty much we are on to the... the Leaky Codren. So, let's head up over to London. Goodbye to this rotten pig pen. And that's all. Oh. King's Cross, what the? Okay, that's what we got in here. Oh, I've never been here. Yay, I took a five minute break and I completely forget where I am. Okay, London. Do we have to go to platform nine and three quarters? Hmm, let's check over here. And then theater, oh. Nice work on the roads. Oh, the leaky coat to them. Hello! Anybody home? Okay, I'm gonna take some beer. 
Oh, on a chest. There's nothing in it. What a rip. Let's see, back here to Diagon Alley. Read note 11. <clears throat> okay, let's find out. Hagrid tapped the brick wall with his umbrella in a special sequence which made it open. He was shocked, it was like he was in a candy store. Wow, Hagrid, that was amazing, said Harry enthusiastically, his eyes as big as apples. Harry was so fascinated with the wall, he didn't notice where they were going. That was until Hagrid pointed it out. Well, do you like it, said Hagrid, placing his umbrella back in one of his large backs. Like what, asked Harry, who was still identifying the wonders of the brick wall. He looked up to see and was shocked at the immense street that lay ahead of him. The streets were full of many different kind of wizards and witches. Some were wearing pointy hats to point as sharp as a needle, while others were wearing school uniforms. Harry asked Hagrid if he would be wearing one soon. He was very excited. They walked past shops and shops full of interesting things. There were cauldron shops, broom shops, robe shops, pet shops, you name it, it was there. Harry pulled out a scrunched up list from his pocket and started to read it through. He needed many items including quills, books, a wand, and he may even bring a pet. Oh I left, there is Miss Monkins. God, she's a stunning if I do say so myself. Over there, OLs, that's where you'll get your wand, only finest ones in the old world, said Hagrid while he strode down the street. But Hagrid, how am I supposed to pay for all this? Worried Harry, he thought that the Dursleys surely wouldn't have contributed. Look up there. That's the Irish pot of gold, that is. Gringotts. No safer place apart from Hogwarts, Hagrid said while proudly polishing his Hogwarts staff badge. But, but, who left me any money? Asked Harry, he looked very puzzled. He looked up towards the giant of a man, Hagrid smiled, and they continued walking. Okay, sweet, so we are going into Diagon Alley. Ooh. Not bad, not bad at all. Oh, I'm supposed to be okay. Uh, okay, done. Oh, very clever. <laughs> like a kid in a candy shop, right? Hey, open. That's a lot of chests. How many diamonds you got in there for me? Bookcases, how to be a quick star. Go to the bank. Magical instruments. Mm. Huh. Dragon blood. What? Please put all of your items in the chest or you will be escorted by one of the angry giants. Okay, fine. No, I'm pretty sure I'll need that sword because whatever he put in here. Whoa! What floor am I in? <coughs> No reason why it's doing that, but okay. Ooh, here we go. This dungeon is peaceful. Keep on peaceful. Judge and Joan, keep on peaceful. Let's make sure. Okay. Go to Hetty's vault. Pretty cool how it lights up now. <laughs> Pistons. Tash retrieved the golden ink knot for them to open the door to Harry's vault. Um, 
Okay, let's see what we can do. Go, 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 go. Oh, the card's pushing me. Okay, what's up? There's one. What's this? What's that? What's this? Wait, did that? Oh, it did open. I thought so. Okay, dude. Sorry, it has to be done. You can't stand on ladders anymore. There we go. Now let's try to find them. It's okay. Probably not need to Spencer. Sweet. Oh boy, this is not going to be fun at all. Really? See, there's no possible way to do that right there. Not without doing this. Hold and shift. Okay, let's see. Go over. Yeah, okay. <coughs> can need that one. Let's see what we can do here. Pop it down. Lock it in. Go over. Don't fall. have to. Really going to get them in there. Let's move that for some reason it was on my desk. 